What's up guys, it's Justin and welcome back to another video. So you may have heard somewhere that interest rates are really low right now and that you should buy a home right now. That's what some people say. Or maybe you save up for a home and now you're ready to settle in. Or maybe just because you know that interest rates are really low, you wanna grab a home before something happens to the market or before someone else does. Well, in today's video, let's talk about why buying a home right now as a millennial or just anyone in general could be really bad for you. And we'll talk about what you can do to avoid these regrets in the future or in the long run. So in a report by CNBC, out of 100% of homeowners who bought a home this year, nearly two thirds or 64% of millennials, that's age 25 to 40, have at least one regret on purchasing their current home. Now only 45% for Gen X and 33% of baby boomers have reported some kind of remorse in their current home. Most millennials are regretting purchasing their home and the biggest regret for being a millennial homeowner is the underestimating cost for maintaining their home. Home. According to HomeVisor's new 2020 State of Home Spending report, last year homeowners spent around $13,000, $14,000 on household projects. Now, yes, those costs really do depend on a lot of factors like where you live, the age of your home, the condition of your home, and how you maintain your home, but it's recommended that they say that you should save up to one to 3% of the purchase price of maintenance every single year. In other words, if your home is priced at $500,000, you should set aside around $5,000 to $15,000 each year for repair and upkeeping. Let's go into details why this may be a lot of money for a lot of people. The median income in the United States is around $61,000, $62,000, and that's without taxes. Now, if you're making around $61,000, $62,000, your tax rate will be around the 35.5%. So that's around an on average, about $6,000 in federal taxes that you would have to pay to the government every single year. What you'll take after taxes is around fifty-five dollars to $56,000. With that type of income, if you purchase a home for $500,000, you'll have to save around, let's say, $15,000 in repairs and upkeeping. Now, that's around 27% of your income that needs to go into repair and upkeeping if you make the medium income. In my own opinion, I think that's a lot of money that has to go into a housing expense. And looking at the lifestyles of many others, a lot of people don't want to spend so much in their housing expense when, you know, as a millennial or someone that's in their 20s or 30s wants to go travel, enjoy their experience with their spouse or with their significant others and just want to experience the world itself. So a lot of millennials are not thinking of that. And this is where a lot of people regret because they think once they get a house, you're set and done and there's no maintenance required or little to none. But a house is like a car, to be honest. You know, cars need to be maintained the more you drive them or the more you have them. So once you buy a car, that's not it, you know. So you have to make sure you maintain, you take care, and you do your responsibilities to maintain your investment. Another regret that a lot of millennials talk about, and that's their mortgage being too high. This one is truly something that I see even with my clients, and I have to make sure that my clients understand this. What usually happens is everyone thinks that because interest rates are super low or they've, they've heard that interest rates are super, super low, that whatever home they purchase, they'll be able to get a low mortgage on the home. But to be honest, and that's not how it quite works for a lot of millennials these days or for anyone else. This is usually how it happens when I work with clients when I go show homes for them. So usually the client usually tells me the price point and you know what they're um, qualified for and what their dream home looks like. And taking that into consideration, we go ahead and look at a couple properties just to see what they like and what they don't like. And when my client finally finds their dream home with everything they want and everything they love about it, I tell them due to the market, you need to write an offer as soon as possible. But like everyone else, you know, they decide to wait it off and they go and look at more couple properties that they want in case they find another home that they like better. But needless to say, like everyone who's seen homes and have gone home shopping, the property is sold to someone else and my clients usually regret on the decisions of not being able to buy that home that they loved and they have to decide on looking for another home. Now, when they do find another home that they love, they'll make an offer right away because they know what happened on their first home. But most likely right now, it usually goes into a bidding war if they're looking at used homes and the clients will literally fight for the home so they can, you know, purchase the home. This is where I've seen 
a lot of people and a lot of millennials overpay for a property without thinking how much the mortgage went up. Yes, interest rates may be low, but home prices are really high and you'll feel the effects in the future. And there's nothing that you can really truly do because you can't refinance your interest rate even lower because right now you're at an all time low and you can't refinance like somebody who's at a 5%, 6% interest rate going back to 2% and having their mortgage low. They're set with the price because it's the purchase price you bought of the home. So let's talk about five things that you can do to protect yourself from having any regrets as a homeowner. The number one thing and the biggest thing that you should do is to not let your emotions cloud your judgments on purchasing a home. Just like they say when you buy a car or anything very expensive, you shouldn't let your emotions get ahead of the judgment of what you're buying. Yes, a home is a home and that's truly where you're going to build a family and gonna make a lot of memories, but in the long run, and to be frank, a home is an investment. You need to protect yourself when you might have to sell it. If you overpay for a home, you may lose equity when you try and sell it and you actually lose money when you do decide to sell it. So don't rush into any deals if you're not 100% sure with it because you're gonna get frustrated in the long run. Make sure that yes, you do love the home, but it makes sense in a financial standpoint. That's the biggest thing that I see a lot of people just forget because they fall in love with the home. Make sure it works with your finance and it works for now, not for the future. Don't expect to get a higher pay raise and expect that it will be easier along in the long run. Make sure it works with your finance and it works comfortably for your living. The second thing that I would recommend is if you can't see yourself living there in the next 10 years, don't buy it. The reason why I say this is because right now, if you buy a home that's overpriced, which technically every home will be because it's an all time high on purchasing a home, it's going to take a couple of years or some years to build up that equity to the level that it is right now. If the housing market crashes, let's say your home that you purchase right now is $550,000, but in actuality, in home value worth, it's only worth $140,000. Then that $10,000 difference, it will go up and down, and hopefully by the 10 years, you will have the same equity so that when you sell, you don't lose money. And this is something that's really important because when you buy a home, obviously, it is an investment, and you wanna build equity onto the home so that you know if worse comes to worse, you do have to sell your home, you're not having to pay out of pocket, or if you're trying to move or have to relocate because of your job, you don't have to pay out of pocket when you do sell your home. That's one thing that you don't want to do is pay out of pocket and make sure you have equity onto the home so that when you sell and making a profit, not a loss, because remember, if you do decide to sell with the real estate agent, which almost 95% of people do, then you're going to have to look at around 3% of the purchase price that you'll be having to pay to the real estate agent. If you sell in Georgia, it might be different in other states. It might be two, it might be one, just depending on where you live. Now let's talk about number three. This is something that everyone should do, regardless of if you're buying a home or not, but you should build up your saving as much as you can. I recommend all my clients to at least have 25% of the purchase price saved up when you buy a home. Now that doesn't mean that you should you should put down 25%, that you can put down 20% if you don't wanna pay your PMI, or you can pay your 3% or your 3.5% if you're looking at an FHA loan or a conventional loan, just depending on what you wanna go with, but you wanna have that cushion of having enough saved up so that just in case something does happen or something goes wrong, you have enough saved to go for those emergencies and you don't have to you know, take a loan or anything. And it's always great to ha create a savings account just for emergencies, for you know, housing repairs or upkeep expense or things that will go on as you own a property. Number four that we're gonna talk about is do your homework. I think this is the biggest thing that a lot of people <laughs> Um, just rely on. A lot of clients rely solely on their real estate agent and their loan officers to take care of everything that eventually when you know it's time to sign the papers and everything has been done, they go ahead and go, what the heck happened? Why am I paying so much? And this and that. They just didn't do their homeworks and they relied on their real estate agents. Something that a lot of people have to understand is that a lot of these real estate agents and loan officers have a lot of clients that they're working at once. Yes, we are truly giving our best efforts to you, but in the long run, there's things that will slip in our head because we're so, you know, we have a lot of things that are going on. You know, we're showing homes to new people, we're trying to sell a home for a client, you know, we're trying to, you know, advertise. A lot of things are going on and there are things that we 
will miss eventually or something small that will be missed. So you want to make sure you know where everything is going. In actuality, it, this is your investment, not ours. Yes, we are helping you with your journey, but we can't truly make it our own responsibility for everything. You need to know where everything's going, what you're signing up for, where the money is going, how much your mortgage is, how much your um, interest rate is. Like, you no, know, make sure you do your homework, ask your real estate, agent all the questions you need ask your loan officers everything that you need to know about your loan and how everything else works the last thing that i want to talk to you about and this is probably a lot of people already know but something that i want to clarify is to work with a great real estate agent and a loan officer this one seems pretty simple and straightforward but i cannot stress this enough great real estate agents and loan officers will make the home buying process so much simpler and you'll save so much money in the long run. It does not cost you anything to get a great real estate agent or a loan officer. When you're buying a home, especially here in Georgia, the seller has to pay for everything to the agent. So you want to do your research and make sure you find the best real estate agent and a loan officer. And the best way that I can recommend you do is go onto Google and literally search up real estate agent near me or wherever you're trying to buy real estate agent near um, Swanee, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, wherever you are and scroll down and look at basically all the top rated or reviewed real estate agents and give them a call. Another great way that I've seen a lot of millennials or a lot of young people find me is going through Instagram. Now I do a lot of advertisements through Instagram, TikToks, YouTube, as you guys are watching. So a lot of where my clients are coming from are basically from social media. So I've seen a lot of people go into social media like Instagram and search up real estate agents or Atlanta real estate agents. And those are basically where you, you know, DM them and see if they're a good fit for you. So with that all being said, hopefully you understand what a lot of home buyers are regretting and how you can avoid these regrets. If you thought this video was helpful, share it to someone who you might know that might think this video will help them. And if you're in Georgia looking to buy or sell a home here, feel free to contact me as I can be your real estate agent and my contact is down below. And with that being said, guys, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.